Peter Wolf here from Azamba Consulting Group. Today we're going to do a demonstration of Sage CRM. I'm going to show you the high level benefits, the features, the things that are going to help you reach your business goals with Sage CRM. Before we get started, I do want to say that I, I, I prefer to talk with people and figure out what your specific needs are before doing demonstrations. This demonstration will certainly give you an overview, but if you want to go deeper after you see this, please reach out to me at azamba.com forward slash sage and there'll be a, a more resources there, more videos, but there'll also be a place to connect with me and set up a time for a one-on-one -on -one personal session. So with that said, let's get started. So Azamba Consulting Group has been around since 2007. We've helped over 400 customers get up and running successfully with Sage CRM. Most of those are small and medium-sized businesses and most of them have a Sage accounting software package. And one of Sage CRM's greatest strengths, in fact, is the integration. I'm gonna get into that in a minute. We focus on quick deployments, long-term consumption. We've won multiple awards from Sage. Our, the real focus for us is your success. And we back all that with a 100% money back guarantee. So you know that we're committed to your success. With that said, let's move on to the agenda today. We're gonna to cover the top three reasons to consider Sage CRM here in a minute. Uh, and then we're gonna go on to the demo. We're gonna talk about basic navigation and search. The reason why this is so important is Sage has spent a lot of effort to make this easy to use, easy to navigate, easy to learn. That's critical for you because you don't want your people spending a lot of time struggling with learning the software. You want them to be doing their jobs and Sage has made it easy to do that. Activity management follow-ups. This is also key. Most of the prospects that come to me looking for CRM, this is one of their biggest struggles. Today's salespeople have to operate at a much higher level than they did 5, 10, 15 years ago. You need to deliver consistent, high quality results to your customers, your prospects, or they're going to find someone else. And so tracking activities properly and easily, uh, scheduling follow-ups either automatically or manually, that has to be clean and smooth. Sage has done this. I'm going to show you how it works. Reports and dashboards, this third thing here, these are also important. A lot of prospects that come to me don't really have a good sense for what's going on in the business. So you don't see what's happening so you can make changes, so you can make improvements. And so by bringing everything together in one place, getting out of spreadsheets and outlooks or inferior CRM systems, by bringing it all together in one place, you can make informed business decisions to improve your processes, improve your people's uh, reaction times and improve, most importantly, customer satisfaction, prospect satisfaction, because that's what brings in the revenue. We're going to talk about prospect customer contact management. Sage does this in a very clean way. And that's, again, it goes back to that point number one, which is you want people to be using the software to do their jobs, not struggling with the software. So I think you're going to like what you see here uh, with the prospect customer contact management. And then the final thing we're going to cover today is opportunity management workflows. This is one of Sage's greatest strengths as well. So the ability to control the steps of a process, a sales process or a service process, and then to automate those steps and to give a nice audit trail so that you can follow up on things easier. So you can juggle more so people don't miss a trick. That's really what the opportunity management workflows from Sage CRM allow you to do. I think you're going to like what you see. With that said, let's talk about the top three reasons to purchase Sage CRM. I have a whole nother video uh, dedicated to this topic, so I'm just going to give a cursory overview here. But if you want to check that out, go to azamba.com forward slash sage and there'll be a much more in-depth video. But the number one thing for sure is the integration with Sage Accounting. Again, if you have Sage 100, Sage 300, Sage X3, any of those accounting products by Sage, the Sage CRM integrates nicely with that. So that again, it's all about putting the information your people need in one place so they can do their jobs faster and more effectively to serve those customers and prospects. A uh, simple thing is imagine a customer calls and asks about a back order. So if I have to go to the accounting software, if I have to go down the hall to the accounting person or pick up the phone and call someone in the accounting to help me out, that's a slower response time. With Sage CRM, you can have that information at your fingertips so you can respond to the customer, get them on the way. That's just a simple example of that integration benefits. And again, I have a video that goes into this in a lot more detail. So please check out the, our website and you can find out more, but that's a real core benefit. Sage CRM is also a right fit for small and medium sized businesses. So this is not to say a program like Salesforce is, is not a good product, but I've had customers come to me from Salesforce and one, I'll never forget this. One of them told me, Using Salesforce was like using a semi-trailer to go down the street a couple blocks to get a bag of groceries every other week. It was just too much for them. Sage CRM is designed for small and medium-sized businesses. 
it does not have the ecosystem and all the complexity of Salesforce. But if you're a small and medium sized business, you don't want that. It's going to be overkill. It's going to slow you down. It's going to com complicate things. You need to be focused on making sales. So you need the right fit, the right tool for the job. Sage Sharem is that tool. And the, the last thing that I like to bring up is Sage Sharem is simple but powerful. <clears throat> so even though it is designed for small and medium sized businesses, the flexibility is amazing. So I'm going to cover some of that today, but I do have other sessions on my website about uh, how to customize Sage CRM. So check those out. But essentially what you want is a tool that will grow with you, that will adapt, that will evolve as your needs evolve. And after you start using CRM for a while, your needs will evolve because you'll get more organized, more disciplined, and you're going to want to take that to the next level. Sage CRM makes it easy for you to do that. And we show our customers how to do that. So customers can become self-sufficient. You don't need to call us for everything. Uh, you're going to be amazed at how simple it is to do some of these configurations. And uh, I can't wait to show you. So with that said, let's get started with the demo. Okay, here we are inside of our Sage Serum system. And before we log into the system, I just want to show you a couple things. Sage CRM is a browser based system. As you'd imagine, uh, you just pull up a browser, you can pick whatever browser you would like and put in your URL and get started. It does load, it's interesting to note though, that Sage Serum does load on a server. So you would need to maintain a server for that. There's more information on our website, uh, zamba.com forward slash Sage, where it kind of explains how that works and why that works the way it does. But you can still access it anywhere you are in the world. So you can set up your Sage Share app so you can access it from your phones, from your home office, from trade show floors, from your obviously from your main uh, company office as well. So you've got all that flexibility. The login, I'm going to log in here as Susan Mays. Now I'm logging in as an administrator user. So it's going to be important to notice as we log in, Susan has rights to everything. So you would, one of our recommended strategies with Sage Sharem rollout to make sure that it goes successfully for you, streamline, less is more. So uh, what we encourage you to do is to prune back the things that you don't want. And one of the things that Sage does really well, I mentioned this before, was that it's very flexible, very easily flexible. So for example, if you don't use leads in your company, it can be as simple as just hiding that from the menu system. And that's a simplified example. You can set up more complex example, like certain people in your company can have access to certain things. Other people don't have access to those things. That could be functionality or it could be record related. So that certain people in the Western territory see only the accounts and prospects in the Western territory. People in the Eastern territory only see the accounts in the Eastern territory. So the, the model is very flexible and adaptable. Part of the navigation, part of the ease of use, part of the key benefits of Sage Serum is that it's simple to get around, simple to learn. And the way Sage has done this is they've made a very clean interface. In fact, most of our customers who start using Sage Serum are surprised at how, how they took to it so quickly. It's very modern interface, very clean. Um, one of the things that Sage has done is they put this black bar at the top, which has all your primary navigation. So things like My CRM. My CRM is the stuff that matters to you when you log in. So it's your dashboard, your calendar of activities. If you're a salesperson, your opportunities. If you're a service person, your cases. And so you can see the stuff that's important to you. When I log in, I would see the stuff that's important to me. And if you're a manager, you can see other people's things. So Susan will be able to see um, other people's calendars, for example. So if I log in here, I'm gonna see Susan's calendar by default, but she can also see anybody else's calendar as well. So it's very flexible as far as managing your teams and making sure that you can see on top of what they're doing and how, uh, how their days are going and if they're focused on the right things that you want them to be focused on. There's another way to see people's calendars, which is instead of just going to my CRM and looking at an individual's calendar, you can use the team CRM. So the team CRM works exactly as you'd probably imagine. You would set up different teams like the direct sales team, the telesales, inside sales, service team, and then you can see their entire calendar at a glance, their opportunities, their cases, et cetera. So you can see everybody's activities at once. So that's very nice. Reports, I'm gonna get back to this in a little bit, but essentially there's hundreds of reports out of the box. In fact, one of the strategies we recommend, again, less is more, we would work with you to remove the reports that you don't want, 
or just shift the ones that you really like, leave the, leave the ones that you don't want where they are in these different categories, and move the ones that you use a lot into the favorite reports. That's pretty easy to do. Marketing is used for a, uh, to, you know, to, to set up marketing lists. So groups of people, targeted slices and dices of your contacts, your prospects, your customers, current accounts, vendors, suppliers. So you can set up lists and then you can do uh, marketing activities against those lists. So I'm gonna cover that in brief. There'll be another video specifically around marketing at a later date on our website. The search here is a global search. So you could do things like give me all the records where Artie was involved. If I spelled this right, let's just uh, try this again. So anywhere Artie's involved. So I got uh, Artie Johnson. I've got communication records with him, uh, with Artie. Um, so you can get to a global search, but you can also use this to find specific granular searches. So if you wanted to get a little more specific about the person you were looking for. So for example, I want to get everyone in the Chicagoland area. So you could do that kind of personalized search. I'm going to come back to that here in a second too. The notification bar is nice. You can set up alerts and notifications just like you'd imagine. So if you sent a quote out and you need a reminder to follow up on that quote, you'd see the little bell here would have a little notification. If you click it, you're going to see whatever uh, activities that you need to follow up on that are overdue or coming up soon. The star is where you can favorite things. So you can just have your favorites. Uh, this is very useful for account management. If you work with certain key accounts all the time, you might as well just favorite them and that way they're always there for you. Just a real quick and easy way to find them and you don't have to do any searches at all. Recent list works the same way. It's almost like a browser recent list. It keeps track of the things that you were working on uh, recently. And as you move through different things in your day, some things will fall off and new things will replace those, those people, those companies, those opportunities that you work on. Very natural way to do things. And then finally over here, you've got the profile bar. And if you're not an administrator, uh, really what you'll do here is go to the preferences so you can configure the CRM however you want. I'm not gonna cover the preferences today except for to leave it at, you can tweak the system in a lot of different ways to make it fit you, your time zone, uh, how many uh, ret rows of data you wanna see on your grids. So you've got a lot of options there. You can also go to the Sage City community. So there's a great way to connect with peers and to ask questions. And of course, if you're one of our customers, we have our uh, personalized forums, to, uh, we use Teams chat so we can connect with you and answer your questions quickly. The other thing that Sage has done with a basic navigation is they've created this sub navigation bar. So I'm in my CRM, you can see the bar here, it's identical to these drop downs. Well, wherever you go in the system, so for example, if I pull up a customer, I can quickly see that that sub bar changes and it's always relevant to the context you're in. So I'm in a company record, and what Sage has done to make this visually engaging is they have different icons based on where you are. Those icons also show up in these bars. So everything is color coded and it's linked together um, with that icon out front. So it makes it intuitive. Once you've used it for a while, it becomes very intuitive. And the bar up here is um, just the, the stuff that's related to a company record. Now I'm gonna come back to that here in a minute. So with that said, I'm gonna move on to uh, just, I'm going to actually show you one more thing about the search. So I mentioned before, if you wanted to do a specific search, so I went to company here. So instead of using the global search, you can see a, a fields here that are specific to company. Now you have to note that this is a demo system. Most of our customers will configure this to their needs. It's very easy to do. So you'd get rid of fields that don't matter as much. So for example, area code, it used to be very strong in the 90s and early 2000s, but now with mobile phones and people on the move all the time, area code isn't as great of a search. So you might replace that with something like, you know, um, their, uh, well, zip code's already in here, but you could replace it with a company ID. So, you know, if you want to search for a specific company and you know their accounting ID, you would search for that. And the way the search works is you can quickly find records. And if you filter, just as you'd imagine, I'm gonna just look for London, people in London. It's gonna just give me the 163 companies. You can page through your data. You can drill down to a specific record. You can do a keyword search, which would search across uh, related entities to find records for you. And you can also save searches. So if, you're, if there's a search that you're doing a lot, um, and this happens uh, with a lot of our clients. So I wanna see my accounts that are in London or my prospects that are in London because I want to do some prospecting this week. 
Well, you would just do that search, but instead of doing that search every time you come to the screen, you would just quickly save that search. And then you could at any point, so for example, active customers in London, I click that and it immediately filters that out for me. So it's just a great way of doing things. And one final thing is kind of segues into the next topic, which is activity management, is when you have these lists, these on the fly lists that you've done your ad hoc queries, you can quickly create actions against those. And this is a very common thing for account management. So some people consider this marketing. There are special functions to do marketing that I mentioned before, but um, this is more for, in my opinion, more for quick marketing, quick account management. So for example, let's say I wanna plan my week ahead and it's a uh, Sunday night and I'm just planning my week ahead. I might grab, I might be on the road and going into London, I wanna check out all my prospects. And I don't know why I'm using London <laughs> because obviously most of our customers are American based, but I'm gonna, I've already started, so I'm gonna stick with it. Um, but so what you can do is you can set up tasks for yourself. So you could send out a new email. Sage Serum integrates with MailChimp out of the box. We'll have a video about that on our website at zamba.com forward slash sage. But um, you could send out an email. So say, hey, I'm gonna be in town. Just wanted to see if you have time to catch up. And then you might uh, merge to Word stuff, envelopes, uh, print labels, you know, send out a physical postcard or something to let them know you're going to be in town and you've got a new product launch that you want to talk about. And then you can do follow-up tasks. So it's real easy to do something like this where I say, um, I want to do phone calls and I want to say, let them know I'm in town next week. 0103 to 0. 0107. I will guarantee you're going to see some typos here as I move forward. So please forgive. Want to discuss our new product offerings for 2021 and beyond. Hoping to get 30 minutes of your time. And so what you do here is I can, again, simply and easily, I can set those calls for myself. I can say I'm going to make all those calls or if I have a team of people dedicated to calling or I have a marketing sales assistant, I can have um, him or her make those calls. So I could assign this to other people. I could make it a team of people. Uh, but either way, I'm going to set these calls up and I'm going to have um, 10 calls done a day. And I'm going to make those calls on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, because those seem to be our slower days where people have more availability. And you can obviously ch change this however you want. There's a few different options here. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And what this is going to do is it's going to create those tasks. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to add in a few more people because I don't want Susan to have to do all those calls herself. I'm going to add in three other people. Now I'm going to save these calls. Still going to add 163 tasks, but it's going to spread it out among these four people. So that's how easy it is to create those kind of activities. And now let's shift over to activity management so you can see kind of what that looks like. So if I go over to my CRM and look at the calendar, and my favorite view is the agenda view, I'm gonna see this grid of things that are gonna happen for me this week and next week. And you can cycle and go forward and back in time. You can filter and say, I only wanna see you know, appointments or tasks. I want to see uh, phone calls. This list itself, you're probably going to get sick of me saying this, but this is all modifiable. You can change what's in these lists. And I encourage our, our customers to figure out what types of things are important that they want to track and make sure that that list manages, uh, matches that. So it might be sending quotes, sending marketing materials, in-person meetings. So instead of just meeting, maybe it's in-person meeting versus conference call meeting. So you can really get granular as far as tracking different activities and actions. But you can see those calls about that um, that I just made, I scheduled for Susan to make those calls. I see I've got those calls popping up on my grid and I can see those are scheduled for Friday, Monday, Wednesday, I've got those calls and I'm just gonna work through those calls until I've made them all. Uh, it also identifies things that are overdue. So that's also very important and easy to follow. But one thing that is, again, another very cool feature is you can quickly and easily work this list. This activity board, this agenda becomes your tickler system. So it reminds you of what to do and helps you stay organized with your day. 
things get on this board three ways. One is you put things on your own list. So Susan just scheduled those calls and put some on her list. And the second way things get on your list is other people, if they have permission to do so, can put things on your list. So for example, Susan put things on, I believe it was Peter Johnson's list. Let's just jump over there. And we should see that there's some calls scheduled there. So Susan had permission to, put, to interact with Peter's uh, calendar. So she put that on Peter's list. I'm gonna go back over to Susan's calendar. The third way, and this to me is the most important thing that Sage Sharon can do for you to make your life easier, to make just to make sure that your people don't miss a trick, make sure that every stone gets touched, is the system, when it's set up properly, can act like an invisible personal assistant for each and every one of your people, and it can do reminders for you. So I'm gonna use an example that we've used at our company, which is if I send a quote out, my system can remind me, put on the calendar in two business days to follow up that customer. So I don't forget to do the follow-ups. Most, most salespeople are really great about engaging with customers, figuring out solutions, figuring out needs, matching them to your products and services. And they're not as good about doing the follow-ups. And frankly, the follow-ups are very important when it comes to closing and juggling sales. So the, by having the system act like that invisible person and assistant for your people, it's going to make sure that nothing gets missed. That's really important in, a, in uh, taking care of customers these days. And that's what it's all about with CRM is we need to take care of our customers because and our prospects to make sure that we have a better chance, a better than average chance of closing that business and keeping those customers happy. So the way you work these once they're in here is dead simple. So I, let's just pretend it's Friday the 1st. I'm going to go ahead and click this task. So I'm going to call Peter Edge at squared finance plc i click the task i come in here and i could say spoke with peter he can't meet next week but wants to catch up in february so i can come in here i've, I've, ta I've recorded that i'm gonna mark this as complete and I could save and go on to my next task, but before I do that, because Peter asked me to meet in February, I can just quickly create a follow-up task. And I could even create an opportunity. Peter said, send me a quote over. I could create an opportunity from here, but I'm just gonna create the follow-up task and show you how this works. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. It immediately saved that last record. And I'm gonna just put a phone out here and say, Peter asked to connect in February. So I'm just gonna put that in there. I don't need any more details because I can always go back and pull up Peter's record and see the, the call we had today. And I would just put this forward on February 9th. I'd probably get a specific date and time. I probably wouldn't do it at five in the morning. I'm gonna go ahead and put it at 10. Seems like a more reasonable time. And I'm just gonna save. Now, once I save this, two things are gonna happen. One, it's gonna take me back to the list and the activity I completed is gonna be gone. And two is this activity will be on my calendar for February 9th. So let's go ahead and look at this. So I come back here and you could see the call there for Peter is gone. And now if I move forward to um, February, oh, let me just do this. I'm gonna move forward to February and I can see that there's that follow up. And so the system is great at helping me stay on top of things, making sure that I don't miss a trick um, and just you know keeping me organized and uh, make sure everything's flowing properly. And I mentioned it before, but Susan can see her teams, her, her direct reports calendars, uh, coworkers can see each other's calendars. So if I'm gonna be out on vacation, I could see if someone can cover some of my calls I need, that need to be made next week. Um, it's just a great way of staying organized. You can also see the entire team's calendar at once. You can see where the sales team is, is going to be, kind of their general activity level. You can stay on top of that. It's a really effective way of, of doing things. Now, the other thing that's really powerful here is this is Susan's calendar. And people ask all the time, does it integrate with Outlook? Can I just put things in Outlook and will it sync over? The answer is yes, it can do that. It does do that, it does that really well. Um, but there's some advantages to training your people to use Sage CRM to manage your day. The biggest of which is this event, this appointment 
is linked not only to Susan's calendar, this date and time, but it's also linked to a specific person, a company. It could also be linked to an opportunity, a sales opportunity or a customer service case. And so the way that works is, let's say Susan's out sick and Peter calls in on February 9th and says, hey, Susan was supposed to call me. Well, someone else takes that call. And if you're doing things the old fashioned way, um, you might not have access to everything. So um, if that's all in Susan's calendar and her outlook, and it's not in CRM, you wouldn't know that that's happening. But so Peter Edge calls, I pull up his record, I go to the communication tab and I can see, oh yeah, um, Susan was supposed to call you, Peter. I see that now here. Um, you know what, let me see if I can help you. And so I could dig that up and I could, you know, let them know that Susan's out sick or, you know, she won the lottery and she's not coming back to work, but you have continuity. You have got the ability to serve those customers even if the primary person is not available. So that's really powerful. Um, the other thing is that works at the, at the company level too. So if I just looked up Peter's company, I would see that same communication grid and there it is there too. And the thing that's interesting here is that you will see any interaction by any of our team with anybody at their company at the company level. And if I went back to Peter's record, I would see any interaction with Peter from anybody at our company. And the key takeaway here is that you put something in once and it's available wherever you go in the system. It's always one or two clicks away. You don't have to go hunting for information. That makes life a lot easier. It makes it easier for you to serve your customers. It makes it easier to work with each other as a team. And more and more these days, team-based selling has taken over account-based selling. And you might still have an account-based model, but I, I'm gonna guess that your people don't work in a vacuum anymore. Uh, that what I'm seeing out there is the trends are that that's going away very quickly. So that's how activity management works and should benefit you. It'll help you keep more organized, keep you on top of things. It's very powerful. Let's cut over now to reports and marketing. So let's talk about reports. Reports are very comprehensive in Sage CRM. And so you can come in and you can see um, all different types of reports. And I'm gonna go through a couple of my favorite reports, um, but generally speaking, the reports are designed to be user modifiable, which means that you can do it. You can be trained to do it. A lot of our customers will modify reports on their own. Obviously we help our customers if they want, but if you, um, have the desire to be more self-sufficient. We'll show you how to do this. I'm going to show you one of my favorite reports first, which kind of relates to those activities that we just got done talking about. The activity breakdown by user. This is an amazing tool. So any of these reports, I can run them. I'll come back and show you some other options here in a minute, but first I'm just going to run this. I can choose to run it to the screen. I can dump it to a PDF. So if I want to send that or share that information to someone that doesn't have uh, Sage CRM, I could just export it to a PDF and then send it over. I could dump it to Excel. So if I wanted to massage the data and do some extra analysis on it, I could dump it to Excel. You can set up search criteria filters for your reports. So right now I'm going to run this for all my users, but I could just say run this activity report just for Susan or Tim, or you could multi-select people and just pick certain particular people. Uh, in this record, I can say, I want to see a certain date range for the set for our purposes here. I'm just going to run it for all my data, in my system. I'm going to hit go. And now what this is doing is it's generated the report. And it's got a nice little pie chart up here, which kind of tells you if I hover over these wedges, kind of what percent of time is being spent on which activity types. This is nice. And you can do this for all reports. You can have pie charts and bar charts. But for me in this report in particular, it's all about this data because this data tells me kind of what everyone's working on. So I can see real quickly here, um, let's say you have Wayne Parcells, one of your salespeople, and he comes to you complaining that he doesn't have great leads and things are tough for him. Well, you run this report and you can see that since we've been using the CRM system, Wayne hasn't really been using the system. So we do have a problem here um, that Wayne is either not doing anything or he's not using the system, but either way, someone needs to talk to good old Wayne. Now let's, take away from the bad eggs and look at some of the maybe the more competitive people. So let's say John, Peter and Susan are all your top salespeople. Well, this tool allows me to see quickly at a glance, let's say Susan is just crushing it for you. She's just knocking it out of the park. I can quickly see the difference between Susan and the other two 
Um, and I can see Susan's doing a lot more meetings. She's doing snail mails. She's hitting the phones like nobody's business. Susan is staying productive and active. And I'm not a big believer that the data tells the whole story, but what this tells me is that maybe there's lessons that we can learn from Susan that Peter and John and the rest of the sales team can adapt to increase their sales, to, in, to make their lives easier. Um, if Susan's doing it, why can't Peter and John be doing it? So, or the rest of the team. So this is just a great report to kind of stay on top of things. And in fact, this is one of the reports we encourage new customers to run on a pretty regular basis daily or at least weekly to make sure that your team is adopting the CRM. You want to catch people like Wayne here before they become problematic and um, have kind of dug their heels in when it comes to early rollouts of CRM. So that's one report. The, the other thing that's nice about these reports is you can have list views. So I'm going to go back to the reports and I'm going to show you a, a list of companies. So sales. So if I wanted to see all of my open opportunities, I can just run this report and it says my open opportunities. And so that's pretty intuitive of what this thing is. It's going to let me see one deals, closed deals, in progress deals, lost deals. I'm going to go ahead and run this. And this is a more of a traditional list view. It does, um, it's still rendering the chart, but once that chart renders, it will uh, pop up a bar chart. But this gives me access to the details. And I want to modify this report because I want to show you. So right now, let's just say um, this has the stage, but it doesn't have the status field. I want to add the status field in for the opportunities. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. I'm going to cancel this. And I'm going to go back to that My Open Opportunities. I'm going to hit the little pencil here. Now, you have to have permission to do this. And again, I'm logged in as Susan, who has administrative rights. She can do everything. So I'm going to come in here and I can see auto hyperlinking is on. So that's great. But I also see a list of columns here. And these are all in English, so it's real easy to do this. And this is not a session on how to build reports. I'll have another one of those on the website at zamba.com forward slash sage. So if you want to check out that and other topics, you'll be able to go there and find out more videos. But I just want to show you this because it is important to see the flexibility of this. So I'm going to add this to the reports contents. It just shows up there. I can put that right next to the stage and I could even add a filter on for this. So I'm going to add that to my search criteria. Oh, it's already in there. So it's already on there, but it wasn't on the reports content. So it's good practice to have it on the reports content so you can verify. Um, you could remove the filter by current user. Th what this means is by default, it's, it's filtering to whoever's running the report. So you could remove that and actually make that a search criteria. So you could run reports for all your team. So I could see Peter Johnson's, uh, John uh, Finch's uh, data, my own data, etc. You can make reports private. Um, you've got a lot of different options here. Again, this, this session is not about how to build reports. I'll have a different session on that. But I'm just going to go ahead and hit save this for now and show you kind of how this works. So I'm going to continue. I've got some options for headers. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Now when I rerun this report, you're going to see that the status field is, is in there. So there it is. And one last thing I, I want to mention while we're on the reports is that auto hyperlinking. What auto hyperlinking does, and this is a really cool feature, is it makes these reports interactive. So sure, you can print them and have a stack of papers next to your desk. We encourage our customers to stop printing reports once they get Sage CRM, because from here, if something stalled out, if I see this thing was opened, you know, a year ago, so this is February 2nd. Uh, well, it's actually in law stage, but let's go to this one here. Um, it's in progress. It was open February 2nd. Now I want to find out what the heck is going on here. I can just click this and what it does is behind the scenes it took me to that opportunity so now i can dive into the details find out what's going on and if i'm a sales manager i can find out what's going on and then go reach out to the person responsible before i waste their time and ask them to get me up to speed i can come in here and i can kind of follow uh sorry get up to speed and follow along with the communications the activities the tracking uh, and just, you know, just make sure I have my ducks in a row before I take up valuable time for my salespeople. So I want to shift over to the dashboard. So we don't generally recommend dashboards as a phase one rollout. And the reason why is because people don't have the data. And they don't really, a lot of our customers come to us, they've never used dashboards before. So they don't really understand how to use them effectively. 
But I do want to point this out because it is something that people will roll out within the first 12 months of using CRM because dashboards give you that kind of quick look, quick glance at what's going on. And essentially there's two types of dashboards that we see out there. There is the single pane of glass dashboard. And this is the one that most people think about when they're thinking about dashboards. So for example, if I go to a sales dashboard here, this is everything going on with Susan. You can see her opportunities. You can see her open opportunities. You can see her accounts that she works with, the contacts that she works with. So this is all about Susan's day and it puts it all in one place. And this can be great for people. This can be useful for people because it lets you see everything at a glance. My favorite type of dashboard though, and I think it's much more beneficial, is what I call an early warning system dashboard. And the way the early warning system works is it's kind of like if you've ever seen the movie War Games, Matthew Broderick, it's kind of like a, a, a end of the world situation. He goes into NORAD's bunker and in the NORAD bunker, there's these screens on the wall and those screens, by default are empty. There's nothing really showing on those screens, but then the Russian fighter jet shows up over Alaska and all of a sudden the screens pop to life. And what that does is it helps the military focus on what's important. And you could use the same principle for your team. So here's some example ones that might get your thoughts going and thinking about ways you could use an early warning system. But two that I really like are my accounts I haven't spoken to in the last 90 days. And obviously you wanna stay on top of your accounts. That's repeat business is a lot easier to get than new business. That's just an age old truth. And so if I have a, imagine this list was blank here and it was my accounts I haven't spoken to in the last 90 days. And if a name pops up there, two names pop up there, what that tells me is next time I have a quiet moment, I should call those people, I should email them, I should just check in with them and make sure that we still have a relationship, make sure that they know we care and that we're on top of things. Um, people wanna work with people who care, people wanna work with people who are organized and disciplined. So that kind of gives me extra insight into staying on top of those things and not letting those customers fall through the crack, cracks. So, you know, in sales, it's the 80-20 rule as always, you know, 20% of our customers deal, bring in 80% of our sales, but that doesn't mean you can ignore the rest of them and you shouldn't. And so that little trick will allow you to stay on top of those. Another one I really like is, imagine another uh, gadget here that's blank. That's my opportunities that were supposed to close in the next 30 days. So let's say I put something in on the 14th of the month and I say it's gonna close on the 15th. So when I log in on the 16th or any time later next week, if that opportunity shows up here in this opportunities that were supposed to close in the last month, that means something went wrong. I either didn't fill out the paperwork correctly or their funding fell through, or maybe I didn't mean the, the, it was gonna close the 15th of this month. Maybe it was supposed to close the 15th of next month, but either way, something needs to be done about that data. And those are just two simple examples of kind of like what an early warning system could look like for you. But the key of the early warning system is it helps you stay organized and it helps you put out fires before they blaze out of control, before you lose an account, before you miss an opportunity. And it can be a very effective way of mobilizing your team around high value, important activities, all right? So the way the dashboards are built are pretty straightforward. They're essentially like mini reports. And again, this is not a session on how to build dashboards. We'll have one of those on the website at azamba.com forward slash sage, but leave it to say that it's very flexible to do so. Uh, you do have to have the right permissions. Not everyone can just make reports and dashboards. And in fact, we again, preach a philosophy of simplicity. So less is more. So it's better to have a few key dashboards, but it is important to note that you can have different dashboards for different purposes and most customers do. So you might have a salesperson dashboard which keeps the salespeople you know, active and focused on what they need to do. And then you might have a sales manager dashboard, which gives a kind of an overview of everything that's going on in your company. So let's shift over to basic prospect, customer, and contact management. So obviously this is a core part of CRM and I kind of went to the company screen before, but I'm gonna just go back over there. So I've got a list of my, my companies and I'm gonna pull up a specific company. I'm gonna clear out the filter I'm gonna go pull up Design Right. They've got some good data in there, so I wanna show you kind of how a good representative company looks. So this is a prospect. 
this cost this company is set up as a prospect and you can have different types in here you could have suppliers vendors prospects customers uh, etc and under this record i have all sorts of related things so i can see what's going on with this company i can see notes about them i can see that activity board and i told you before here's a good example of this I can see everyone in our company who's talked to anyone at their company. So we got Arthur and Reg Barrow, and we got Susan and John from our company talking to those folks. I can see follow-ups. I can slice and dice this so I can see um, particular things like marketing brochures they've received, email campaigns, etc. I can see who's been talking with this customer. So if I need to talk to them, I can get a, get my bearings real fast. I can see any open opportunities that we have for them. So we've got three open opportunities here. Um, I could also switch this grid and see if we've lost any opportunities. So good news is they're a prospect. We haven't lost anything yet, but we haven't won anything yet either. So that's something that obviously we need to work on. Uh, we could see if they're a customer, you could see customer service issues. So a lot of people think of CRM, they think of sales. Uh, CRM also can be used to track customer service issues, complaints, uh, problems. Uh, you can get a good feel for what's going on with your service levels, your product quality by tracking cases in CRM. And just like with opportunities, you can track follow-ups and automate those things so that people don't miss a trick so you can have very quick response rates. As you'd imagine, you can have unlimited people at a customer so or a prospect. So, you know, you might be dealing with only one person, that's fine, but you might also have the other decision makers that you wanna track. So you can have unlimited people attached to the company. You can have unlimited addresses. You can have uh, phone numbers, emails associated with the company. Uh, you can track documents. This is one of my favorite features. It's a very small and simple thing, but um, if I sent a quote to someone or a marketing brochure, I would just attach it in to the documents tab, and then I can access that anywhere I go. So if I'm on my phone and I need to figure out what I sent to Artie over at DesignWrite, I can just pull up their record, I can go to the documents tab and I can see that marketing brochure and pull it up on my phone. I don't need to have someone email it to me. I don't need to dig around in the file folder. I have it right there. So those are all some of the more the powerful things that you can do. And when it's time, you can convert them to a customer and you keep that continuity. Um, so it's, it's very easy to manage that and organize that. At any point, if I need to do anything new with this company, so let's say um, I found a new person. I can just hit the little plus sign, hit the new person. And so let's say, um, and I'm not very imaginative here, so I'm just gonna do Jane Smith, and I'm gonna enter that record. And this is a dedupe rule that's set up. This is nice because it makes sure that you don't put a lot of data in that's duplicate. And it's just warning me saying, hey, there's all, all these other Smiths in the system. Are you sure you wanna add Jane in? You know, Is she a new record or is she not? And you can tighten or loosen those rules. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit ignore warning and enter. Now this screen that comes up is the new person entry screen. Again, this is a demo system. This is all of the data that's in the demo system. For our customers, one of the first things that we do is we streamline this. So you'd probably have only eight to 10 fields here. You wanna focus on the key important things to make the lives of the data entry people simple. You don't wanna overwhelm people with having 100 fields on the screen going to want to make it quick. So I'm going to flow through here. It automatically defaults in the company's address. It automatically defaults in their business address. But let's just say I'm going to pop in their mobile phone. And I, this is defaulting in the business address email, but I'd probably override that. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and hit save. And that added Jane Smith in for design right. And now if I go back to design right, I can see under people, Jane is going to be there. So it's real easy to add records in. The same process works for adding new companies in, but this little plus sign will become your friend because it makes it quick to add new phone calls, new tasks. Another interesting thing to note is like if there's certain types of tasks that you do a lot, like let's say you uh, set up an in-person meeting, you can actually create your own buttons here that automate those things so that you click the button and it already pre-fills in different pieces of information. So again, it's all about streamlining and making things easy for your people. Okay, so now let's move on to opportunities because opportunities is the heart of a sales system, right? And again, SageCRM is great at managing 
opportunities, but also service issues. So everything I show you on the opportunity side, you could do the same exact things on the case side, the service side. So let's just go into one of these records. So right now, this 50 user plus consulting has been out there since March 9th. Let's dive into that and see what's going on. So at the top, you'll notice that context sensitive menu bar again. So I can see all sorts of things that have been happening here. First, I get my summary screen, which gives me an overview of what's going on, the forecast amount, um, the source, you know, these fields, again, you would tweak them to make them suit your needs, the type of deal it is. And you can make these things dynamic. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and hit change here. Um, if this was a product deal or a service deal, maybe you'll have different fields you want to track. So if it's a product-based deal, maybe track the product that this customer is interested in. If it's a service-based deal, maybe track the service schedule and time frame that they want to start the services. So you can have different uh, varieties there and you can have dynamic data pop up. The other thing that you can do here is, um, again, you can track communications at this level. And I mentioned this before, but I want to show you the power of this. If I have a new task here, I'm going to do a phone call say follow up on this are they a go for january so i'm going to put this in here i'm going to pop this on the calendar for next week and i'm going to just go ahead and hit save and i've got this in here but now if i also went over to arthur's record i'm going to see that same communication and if i go over to design right I'm going to see that same communication. And again, the key is that you put data in once as far as those activities and it gets, it, it trickles to wherever you are in the system. And if I want to get back to the opportunity real quickly, I click this little about sign. It takes me back to the opportunity. So that's kind of how that works. And again, you can track documents the same way. If I put a document to this opportunity, like a sales brochure, a product specification, it would filter up to the person, to the company. And now let's talk about workflow. Um, this The workflow is very powerful and I see here I do not have workflow turned on. Give me one second. Sorry about this. I will show you something while I'm in here. The workflow is, is pretty powerful. Um, essentially what you can do is you can create a decision tree. So you can figure out your path that your opportunities take, your cases take. You can even put pass on accounts. So for an account, if there's certain things that you do, like an annual review or a check-in call, you know, you could put little activities on there. But each one of these branches gives you different options. So you can have dynamic branching. You can set up these rules so that maybe new salespeople can't submit proposals. Maybe if you're if you've only been on the job for less than 90 days, maybe instead of proposal submitted, it's send a proposal to manager for approval. So you can have dynamic conditional options available to you. And you can get as, as uh, complex and make this as robust as you need. We're big fans of simplicity, but obviously if your sales process requires complexity, you can do that. And each one of these actions, these, these rules can have different actions. So once you have a rule, you can have different actions. And these actions essentially are automations. So for example, if I sell someone who's a prospect, if it's their first time that they were bought from us, maybe it triggers an alert to the accounting people to promote them to a, a customer. Maybe the system automatically promotes them to a customer. A lot of times you want your accounting team to do that because they'll want to run a credit check and set them up properly in the accounting system. But the key is that there's some automations that happen. Another common thing that happens is a uh, first time customer buys something you schedule a follow-up so the salesperson will follow up with them in 30 days, 60 days, whatever the time frame is, to just make sure that everything went well. Because again, you want to show them that you care, make sure that you get the repeat business and that you're dependable and that you can be counted on. So I'm going to go ahead and activate this workflow. And then I'm going to jump back over using my recent list. I'm going to jump back over to that opportunity. And now I can see my workflow in place here. And the way it works for a user. So behind the scenes, that tree can be a little scary, but from the user standpoint, you see these buttons down here and they're not scary at all. In fact, they're very easy to use. So I'm going to go ahead and accept this opportunity. I'm going to say, this looks good. I'll run with it. I'm going to save this. 
and now I've got these actions here. And if you remember the tree, this is what's happening is now it's showing me those three three uh, options. And now let's say I'm going to qualify them. Spoke with Arthur. Oh my typos. Um, he seems serious, and budget is in alignment with our offerings. And I'm going to hit save. And now I move to qualify, and I've got different options. And again, as you're moving forward, what this is doing is it triggers actions. It triggers things that happen. So when I hit submit proposal, it's only showing me those fields that I care about right now in this part of the sales cycle to move this thing forward. So it doesn't show me 100 fields on the screen. You might have 100 fields that you track about your opportunities and your customers, your prospects, but this is only showing me the stuff I need to care about. And you can require certain things. So for example, I can't save this if I didn't have some sort of certainty, forecasted certainty percent or forecasted dollar amount at this point. It's a rule that our company came up with and so we've implemented it within Sage CRM's workflow. Very simple to do, very powerful. So I'm gonna say, um, looking great. And I'm gonna hit save. The other thing that happens is, again, this is the those automations not only show things in the screen, and I'm kind of doubling up on what I said before, but this is, this is gonna make your life a lot better where it will do reminders for you. It's that idea of the invisible personal assistant. So it's gonna do reminders for you and make sure that you don't miss a trick. So when I send that quote over, I submitted that proposal, it could put something on my calendar that says, hey, Peter, don't, or Susan, as I'm logged in as Susan, hey, Susan, don't forget to follow up with this customer. So it just can just make those kind of follow-ups and those, those notifications real simple. So the last thing I wanted to show you about opportunities, so I just showed you how to add an opportunity. It's pretty, I'm sorry, how to modify an opportunity. Adding an opportunity works a lot like adding a person. I can create a new opportunity on the fly here. It's gonna pop me up the screen. And again, you would streamline this and make this the fields and data that you need to track about an opportunity. I'm not gonna do that right now. I am gonna jump over and show you the opportunity pipeline because this is the another piece of the puzzle when it comes to opportunity management. So I went to my CRM opportunities and this shows me Susan's sales grid. I can see Susan's currently working on 18 or 16 opportunities and it gives me some statistics like the forecasted amount, weighted forecast, weighted average based on the certainty percent and whatnot. And any one of these I can drill down, I can sort on different things here, I can filter on different things over here, I can click the pipeline. So these stages, again, I've said this before, but everything is customizable. These are the demo system stages. Your stages might look different, but I can click on any one of these and it'll filter down just to those seven in the proposals submitted and it changes my little summary grid. Just a great way to manage things. Susan, because she has rights to do so, can check out other people's pipelines and see what they're working on. And of course you go to the team's pipeline and see kind of what the entire direct sales team is working on. So you can get a feel for how the your business is looking over your entire uh, team. So with that said, I am going to call this to a close and I would encourage you again to reach out if you have questions, if I didn't cover something that you're wondering about, or if your business has very sp specific needs you're, that you're concerned about, please go to azamba.com forward slash sage. I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one call with you. Again, as I said at the top of this call, I really like to find out more about your particular needs so I can tailor the presentation and talk to you about how other companies like yours have tackled their problems successfully with Sage CRM. And I'd love the opportunity to do that for you. So please reach out. And uh, I just want to thank you for your time. Bye everybody.